Listen up, business women. Would it be valuable to you if you could grow your business and live your life in full health and vibrancy? Like, what if you didn't have to choose to prioritize one over the other, but could have both? So take that skepticism hat off for a moment, put it aside, and let's focus on how would living in full health and vibrancy affect the results you're getting in your business? And how would growing your business affect your health and well-being? So we are about to examine the possibility of all of that with our special podcast guest today. And so I am awesome Angie Ingstrom. And I'm Gita Atka. And I'm here to, to welcome a special guest for today. Welcome, Priscilla. We are so excited to have you here today. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello, ladies. Hello, everyone. I we love that we're, in, that we're in three you. different Sorry. continents. We're in three different continents right now. I love that. We've got Australia, Denmark, and United States. <laughs> countries, three different countries. Bringing the world together, ladies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's special. <laughs> now we're super excited to have you here today, Priscilla. So welcome once again to Momentum Podcast Makers. And um, let me just share a short bio for those of you who don't already know Priscilla. So I'm just going to share a short bio. Now Priscilla has been in the healthcare field for 25 years and she also has a doctorate in behavior optometry. She's packed all of this experience and her knowledge into supporting business women in using their emotions as a compass to create business growth while at the same time living their lives in full health and vibrancy. And welcome again, Priscilla. We're so excited to have you here. <laughs> oh, me too. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Yay. Well, let's jump in it. Um, Priscilla, tell us what inspired you to start your business? Well, my inspiration actually came from my son, believe it or not. Like, it's such a funny place to create this online part of my business. But when um, my second child was born, he had some developmental things happening. And I originally, as a behavioral optometrist, had a bricks and mortar practice. Um, I started in business in 2005, so over 20 years. And um, he started having some things happening with his development and because I'd worked with children for so long I noticed straight away that something wasn't quite right and so I dived in to personal development with regards to the nervous system and child development even further to try and help him and the things that I learned the things that I experienced um, shifted me as a business owner and I'm like to share this this is so precious it's so valuable and um it was unexpected it was like I was doing it out of you know the mothering energy of helping my son but the process of me stepping into that deep diving into the nervous system development and how to shift it for him um changed my life as a businesswoman it's like I've got to share that this for other business women I've got to help like I've got to be there to support them in like growing their vibrancy in their business because it changed my life could you expand on that a little bit that's interesting what you just said like can you get more specific on how like what that looked like what was that change for you what did that look like yes so in the beginning of my business I I I was a very high achiever kind of personality. And look, I feel like there still is that element. It's like, I just have a very big purpose. I knew from a young age that I had a big purpose and bringing that to life in my own business felt like there was so much to do. And each milestone I hit, it's like, there's always more, there's always more, there's always more. But when I was in the business, it felt like the more was difficult to cope with. It felt like the more was pressure. It felt like the more was something that was pulling away from my soul. Whereas the more now is led by my soul. The more now is nourishing my soul. The more now is completely aligned within myself. So it's like 
there's a difference. Before it was almost like I was a ticking time bomb in the sense that I felt like everything had to expand and there was always something that was coming in and how do I cope with like the demands of life and business and the demands on my soul of being loved. Like it's these things as a woman that we desire, like we desire to have a partnership. We desire to, if this is your desire, it was my desire to have children. It's not everybody's, but definitely to be loved is everybody's, right? It's like to have really beautiful connections and relationships with people. And then if it's your desire as well to have children, that was a big one for me. But I found that the desires in my soul and my heart that were for love were being pulled on with the desires of my purpose and what I came here to do to support others. And it was this tug of war between the two things. It was like I was either fulfilling my soul's purpose to grow my business and support my clients, or I was fulfilling my soul's purpose with like finding my partner, like having ch children together, spending time with my children and growing my connections in that way. And it's, it was like it, I would either nourish one and the other felt like it wasn't it's like imagine having like a few plants and it's like you spend the time to nourish one but then the other ones are, are drying out a little bit and then you go over to tend to those ones it's like oh yes look I really want to nourish this relationship but then the other one starts to feel a little malnourished and it's like I always felt like I was putting out the fires in my life like trying to find um ways to kind of fix the things that were coming up and health issues were the things that often came up you know I had autoimmune issues thyroid issues and it was because of this self like inner conflict within myself of well, what was I nourishing <laughs> and so then your son came along with these issues that you started researching and that kind of illuminated mm -hmm. all of this for you is that correct yeah that was the beginning of it all definitely it's when the flower started to unfold and at yeah. that time you were already a, a behavioral optometrist which I yeah. tell the uh, yeah. listeners what is a behavioral optometrist I actually know what that is <laughs> I did not know what that was before you know I went down that journey of learning what it was so explain that real quick yeah, so brain training, basically, like helping people understand their perceptions, so what they're perceiving in the world. And I worked a lot with children with developmental issues, um, learning difficulties in the classroom, being able to process visual information is very important for us to learn how to read, learn how to write. Yeah, I, I found it fascinating um, that the, I didn't even know that leg of optometry existed because when you think optometry you know I think you know how to be able to see clearly awesome. I this whole yeah. side of emotions and regulation re regulating emotions and all you know all of this that you're that you get into like it's a whole thing like <laughs> I even asked yeah, an optometrist really cool. once I asked an optometrist once about um behavioral optometry and you know he's like you know what I think we had a class on that once <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> you have to, you have to specifically like study that and open that up within your practice. Yeah. yeah, it's very powerful work that you do. And so then at some point you transitioned online into coaching. So tell us what your business is now. What what is it? What what does your business do? Yeah, yeah. So I work with women growing and scaling their online business, mainly coaches. Um healers, activators, women that are in the online space. But look, I do work with entrepreneurs in general, business women in general, but I do focus on women that are coaches. Yeah. And so we work with growing their business in this vitality, this um vibrancy. And it's it's um this concept of the burnout I guess that happens to us but it's not necessarily the feeling of burnout for everybody that's not like the forefront experience some of them experience that they're in a plateau in their business 
some of them just feel this pull that I described between the, the different things that they're wanting to do in their life versus their business. And what I notice is that a lot of them like wonder to themselves whether they need to reshuffle their calendar, whether they need to go and have a break, whether they need to um, like meditate, do yoga, do certain things to like regulate their nervous system. Um, and one of the the interesting parts of it is it's like the point where they realize something isn't right can be as simple as a loved one getting sick. You know, like it's not as simple, but it's just like we question what we're doing sometimes. And that to me is like one of the biggest points is like when they get a diagnosis or when someone in their family gets a diagnosis. And that's one of the biggest things that I want to bring awareness to. It's like, don't wait to the point where somebody gets a diagnosis. It's like we are here to enjoy what we're doing. We're here to do it in a way where um, we just love it. Like you can grow your business. You can scale your business without enjoying your life. And a lot of people do it that way. And if that's somebody's choice, then, um, you know, we all have this freedom to choose. But my passion is growing it in a way where life feels so good. It's like you open up both. You open up both and it is possible. It doesn't have to feel like it's a burden. It doesn't have to feel like you're putting out fires. It doesn't have to feel like you're fearing health issues that's one of the things that happens is like we fear it but something happens in our lives either we like get a diagnosis or someone we love gets a diagnosis and then fear drives the action mm. Mm. so good yeah. now I was wondering do you have some system for this or do you work more individually with people yes I do have a system definitely so my system is the connect method and what oh, I do, would you share? Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so what I do with that is we first look at the download of what it is that they want in life. Like, what is it that they desire? What What is this big dream? What's the landscape of the big dream? What does it look like? Not only in their business, but in their personal lives as well. Because often these things are in the undercurrent. I had a client the other day, actually, and she um, is having a bit of a plateau in her business. And it's like her experience is that there's a plateau in the business, but there's other things going on in her personal life that are causing her to block. Black clients come, all clients coming in. And it's like we have these like visions of what we'd love our life to be. And when parts of that aren't coming through, we block, we block things and it can come out in the weirdest ways. So the first step is always to look at the big dreams. Like what is it that you would absolutely love your life to look like? And then we look at the leaks. Like where are the leaks happening? And my favorite analogy is looking at a computer and it's like I don't know if you've ever had a laptop where you've got so much stuff on there that it's running slow because there isn't enough working memory right I don't know if you're like me but like the, having all these tabs open and you know there's a lot happening in my life <laughs> yeah I think I think we and can so, relate to that <laughs> yeah definitely yeah you got too many tabs open. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> mm. And so when the working memory of a computer is taken up by stuff, then it doesn't work as efficiently, right? And it's not just about like um, having your calendar. Like a lot of women are like, okay, I'm just going to clear my calendar and I'm going to do I'm going to take a holiday or I'm going to um, make sure I work less. Like these are all putting out fires. 
And so what I like to look at is what can we do to find the leaks? Where are the leaks? What's causing the leaks? And usually the space taken up by the leaks is related to emotional charges. Emotional charges take up so much of that energy. It's like then there's no more space left. And it's like, you know, building up all these um, unwanted programs, I guess, in the computer system that take our focus away, that take away the energy within the system. And it's like we look at, well, why, why have we got these charges? And, and the charges that get in the way of our our day-to-day life because it's not about fixing right and you know this so well it's like right. we're not broken there's nothing wrong with us right it's like we have been given everything that we could possibly need and the answer is within us yeah. Can, can you elaborate on emotional charges? When you say emotional charges, um, paint that picture for the listener. Yeah, definitely. So when we have an emotional charge with something, it it attracts to it. It's like we there's something within us that is boiling up in the background. And I guess how I explain it to my clients is, is that we build this internal catapult. You know what catapults are, yeah? It's like those things that where you, in the medieval times, where you, you've got this um, piece of wood that you push back and then you pop a boulder in it and you tie it down. And then when the enemy is on the other side of like the catapult and you're ready, you cut the rope and it fires. And so this is something that is very inherent to our nervous system. We can build up these emotional catapults and the charged emotions build up in these catapults and then you'll find yourself in situations where the catapult goes off and you know when it goes off. It's like, why did I do that? Why did I react like that? I love that person. Or um, I actually really love that employee, but yet I told them this, this, and this. I, you know, like it's such a powerful thing when it happens. It's like a telltale sign that underneath in the ripple, there's something that keeps building up. And so finding these catapults within our system is really important because they're the driving force of what pulls us back. They're the driving force of what causes us to feel like we have to um, nourish one plant more, like the business plant more or the, the love plant more or the child plant more and all these different scenarios. It's like we feel guilty we don't have enough time to spend with our children or we feel guilty that we don't have enough time to find a, the partner of our dreams. We feel guilty that we have some sort of overdrive in our system and we can't conceive children. We feel guilty that we're sick and we can't serve our clients. We feel guilty about all these different things that are happening and these catapults are in the background, the thing that causes us to like let go of that charge from within ourselves and like ripple it through to other people. And then it comes back to us. And it's like this cycle of rippling things out and then receiving back the ripple. And it's like, oh, okay. And this is where, you know, the digestive, the third step in my connect method is really important because A lot of people think that releasing is the way to um, move through the charge. And what I found is, like, I compare it to the digestive system. If you think about how human digestion works, it's like we eat something and then it goes through our system and eventually we excrete it out. Releasing is the excreting out. And that part feels nice because it's like, okay, we got rid of it. But the 
point of human digestion is not just excretion. Human digestion is there so that we can like have nutrients within our system, absorb nutrients and bring in the good stuff. And so when it comes to emotions, just excreting or letting go is not um, going to digest the wisdom. So my work is all about really processing that information and digesting that wisdom. And, you know, what I find is that the letting go is often like, you know, when you have a cry, when you journal, when you tell people about your problems, when you go and have a holiday, when you um, let it off your shoulders, I guess, or you you say something to someone and it ripples out to them in a way you might not have wanted to do, they're all letting go. You're letting it go. And sometimes in the moment it feels good to let it go. The letting go doesn't absorb the nutrients, right? And so we work with getting that system to process information. And so my expertise is in finding ways to process, both with energetics. I work with energetics. I work with memory reconsolidation, recoding. And then I also work with the body part of things. So with regards to processing information, it's really important to bring together the different systems in the body. When we sleep, let's say, we have this um, motion of the eyes back and forth, which is like the deep REM sleep. And this is linked with being able to process our emotion. And so um, my work is with bringing together the bodily systems process information as well. So when someone works with me, they can choose to either do just the energetics, the recoding, the memory reconsolidation, or they can choose to do that and the body work. The reason the body work is different is, I guess, so let me go to the emotional um let me go to the energetic. Sorry, the word energetic was what I was meant to say. <laughs> the energetic aspect of it. And to me, the energetic aspect of it is getting into the zip files. So in our computer, we have special little zip files. And these are the files that are stored deep within our subconscious. And these files are harder to get into than the normal files. I don't know if you've ever tried to get into a zip file, but you can't just click on it, you know? I was not just going to say that. Like, I can't stand zip files. <laughs> I know. It's so <laughs> it's annoying. It's so difficult. And they take up so much space and they're like, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love that. And that's such a good analogy too, is that they take up so much space and they suck out the working memory they do they really do and they this is a very big part of the leaks this is where we have these catapults there that's where the catapults live and that's where you know we need to get into and to get into that part of our brain takes a different program and so when we tap into that it, it really brings major shifts with it so back then, up to your three part system, just to kind of yes. make you know help help the listener follow along with where we're at. Tell tell us again. Mm. We we've gone through three steps so far. What were the three steps? Mm. Yeah. So the first step was downloading, downloading the life that you know the things that really nourish their soul. What did they re receive as their soul purpose? What is it that they would really love to step into in life? Okay. both with their career and with, like, relationships, really, relationships with um, a partner, whether they want to have children or not, and what their relationships look like, their lineage, like um, their families, like generational um, 
you know, what's happening within the generations? How do they feel about past generations? You know, like is a sister wound, mother wound, those sorts of things, as well as what we go into is like, what is what would you like your relationship to be like with your mother? What would you like your relationship to be like with your sister and, and all those things? Like we really open up what what would feel so good for you. Mm. So, so I'm taking notes. So there, the three-step oh, nice. process so far, we've got download and step two is mm -hmm. what? Step two is looking for the leaks. Looking for the leaks. And then what was step three? And that is for us to digest the charge. Digest the charge. And then there's there more after that, or is that your three-step process? I've got one more. Okay, let's get into that one. Awesome. Okay. So this that is wonderful, is Priscilla. Upgrade. <laughs> oh, thank you, darling. Yeah. <laughs> That's when we upgrade the computer. Upgrade the computer. And this one I find particularly useful for women that are wanting to be seen in online, the online space, become an influence. Like when, when their calling includes being an influencer. Mm. And the way I like to think about it is, is that, you know, the general person can have like a four gigabyte, eight gigabyte laptop and be okay. It's like the, the RAM, the random access memory in that kind of computer works really well for the general day-to-day -day life that a person wants to have. But if you want to be an influencer, then it's a like it's a different situation. It's kind of like running software that needs a little bit more or more power in in the circuitry. And you know, like gaming computers have 16, 32 gigabytes for a reason, because an eight gigabyte computer isn't going to be able to cope with it. And so this is what I work with with women that really want to be seen and heard in the online space. It's like it takes a different it takes a different system to be able to cope with the circuitry of being seen and heard to that level. That's brilliant. And this is I, what I like to play with. Yeah. That's brilliant. Very so, well said. That's amazing. So, so I, I, I was thinking <laughs> the first three steps are for everybody and the fourth step is for business owners. Is that correct? Well, that's a really great point, Gita. I, I honestly just work with business owners. Um, and okay. I, I see where you you could really, you're right. And eventually, you know, maybe, you know, if it gets to the point where I get like Tony Robbins or um, <laughs> yeah. one of the like, yeah, maybe it will be for everybody. <laughs> Let's see yeah. what happens. Hey, there you go. <laughs> the, the female Tony Robbins. <laughs> Yay. Sounds <That's> great. Awesome. <laughs> I love your analogies with the computer. That's brilliant. Oh, that's really awesome. That's, I'm so glad. <laughs> all right. So I think, um, so that's your four steps in your process, correct? We got through the process? 100%. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So as we wrap this up here, is there anything you want to speak to? Um, any resistance as far as like if people are, you know, they're resonating with this and they're thinking, ah, it's, it sounds great to maybe hire a coach to kind of help me through some of this stuff, but I don't know, like, Speak to some of that resistance a little bit, and then we'll wrap this up. Thanks, Angie, for sure. What I find is that the women that I work with are so incredibly well-versed in personal development is they often find themselves in a space where they think that they should be able to do it themselves. Mm. that's probably the biggest resistance that I run into because they are so incredibly like connected to source and their soul they lead themselves that way already so beautifully and they're connected with knowing that like they're, they've got all these techniques in their tool bag like they they've got some sort of healing modality or they've got some like a coaching certification or they've got their own like systems of how to cope with stress and strain and like helping others with development they do that for a living they help others with that and it's like there's this question in their minds it's like I should be able to do it myself 
And what I love to share is that like when it comes to our own blind spots, we cannot see them as clearly. And whether it's me or it's someone else that is there to support you, if you are in the personal development space, helping other people, sharing your gifts with other people, there should be somebody that is there supporting you through that, that can see your blind spots. Because otherwise you're left in this kind of like bouncing back and forth. You'll find yourself in your head, like in your own head. And, you know, these are the different things that can ha happen. Like we all know that spiritual bypassing is a way people cope with things. You know, they they go in deeply into finding like the that love frequency, that joy frequency, but they shut out the feelings in their body. And then now we have like this was the first wave. Now we have a wave where everybody knows about the nervous system. Everybody's an expert in the nervous system. And there's so much information out there now that's like, and I love that there's so much information that we need to start getting into our bodies. We need to feel into our bodies. We need to notice where, you know, we feel certain things and what we're feeling. But then what can happen there is that we can like go into our feelings so much that we bypass other things. <laughs> and Humans so are fascinating. It's an art. We are like it's such an art. And you know, you may find yourself in your head sometimes. It's like there's these patterns, there's these loops. And I've got to share this because this is one of the most important aspects is that often it's a little nuance. It's a little thing that just stops the cycle from going through. It's like we get stuck in our heads thinking about, oh, well, I should be able to cope with this or I should be able to do this myself. or that. But it's usually just a little thing that needs to shift and it's very hard to see it for yourself. And I like to... Um, I like to talk about it with my cleaning analogy of why, like, why it's just this little thing, like the cycle that happens, why it spins and loops all the time. It's like when I clean my house, I like to wipe down the benches first because I feel like if I vacuum first and then I wipe down the benches, I feel like the vacuuming's kind of, you know, like, you know, you, you could spill Mm -hmm. it over this one time I didn't have my thing my little sponge thing that I like to use so I had said in myself yes I'm going to go buy the sponge a bit later on but I kept bringing up this loop in my head that I have to vacuum and I'd be doing my work and this little thing with this little message was coming up you have to vacuum and then I'd walk over to the vacuum and I'd grab the vacuum and then I'd start to do it and I'd realize well hang on you haven't wiped you haven't wiped the bench tops but then you don't have the sponge to wipe the bench tops and it's like this loop that it's it's like a hound dog that won't give up it's like the smell is there and you want to keep doing it even though you don't have the ability to follow it through and this is the loop it's like together we find the sponge like we find the little nuance that's causing you to have this overthinking loop that can't break through on its own for some reason. I'm like, we all have those sponges. I always make sure I'm supported by somebody to help me find my sponges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, what I'm thinking is, you know, like think, think of any professional athlete or anyone that's doing big work in the world. They all have coaches. Yeah. Like even like mm. Michael Jordan, the best basketball player in the world, you know, he mm. had a coach. His coach yeah, wasn't the best basketball sure. player in the world, but he was able to yeah. coach the best. You know, you know what? Yes. It's it's so it, it's fascinating. Um, if you want to go faster in business, to have good people around you that can help find those sponges <laughs> with you mm. together. I like the I like the word you use together. You you work on it together. Yeah. And and just yeah. level level everybody up that way. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, as we wrap up, um, is there any last uh, things you want to add before we ask you the final question? 
Um, yes. One of my biggest parts to upgrading the computer, getting the RAM to be better capacity so it can hold more, is to bring together different systems within the body. One of my biggest like bodies of work is um, being able to bring like this connection between the location system in the body, the balance system in the body, and the visual system in the body. Those three systems can bring about so much confusion. And so when, you know, a lot of people talk about somatic um, techniques like vagus nerve things. And so what I found is that these three systems are so pivotal in our flight, fight, freeze, fawn response. Yes, the vagus nerve is important, but we can't just look at the vagus nerve. We've got to look at the whole body. And our whole body has these location receptors throughout the body, in, in, in the muscle fibers, even the little muscle fibers of the eyes. And so these need to compute and connect with the balance system that's in the inner ear and the visual system. And this together is how we process information, how we digest information. And so, you know, this capacity to open that RAM up for yourself is so important for your health. It's so important for your vibrancy. It's like you open up a whole new world for yourself if you can open these things up. And then you're no longer having to put out fires with your health. You're no longer having to put out fires with trying to have like shifting around your calendar or making sure you've got time for your loved ones. It's like you'll be able to step into a place within your body where you've got this opened up capacity because you can digest things more easily. And it's never about time. It always seems like my whole life I always thought it was about time. I don't have enough time to do this. I don't have enough time to do that. And I actually got to a stage in life where I had a whole heap of time and I still felt like I didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. I sold my business. I sold my bricks and mortar business. And it's like we always find something <laughs> to fill in yeah. the time. I love those, yeah. the three systems, balance, location, and vision. Did I get them right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'll just speak very quickly to this because I have a very visceral experience around what you're talking about. Because that right there is behavioral optometry. <laughs> it, that, well, it's where my roots began. So yes. there's definitely a link to that. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely linked to that knowledge. And um before I knew anything about any of any of this that we're talking about, um, I didn't know, like I had no idea all these, you know, uh, what do you call them? Catapults in the background. Yeah. You know, I, I had no yeah. idea all of this stuff. And now I, 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 listeners, I'm just going to challenge all of you listeners. Now, you know, you're aware of some of these things and there should be some aha moments going on. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> I resonate with that. Like I never realized that about myself before or whatever, like something hopefully triggered you today as you were listening, because, um, uh, you know, I know for sure it resonates with me. I have a background in studying, not, not to the degree of you, but I behavioral optometry. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> and then you layer that onto your, all the other modalities that you just went through on how you help people. Um, that, that special under knowledge that you have is brilliant. Um, and I love that now you've been able to put together this very specific system that, and you're helping women across the planet um, with their vibrancy, their health and their businesses. I love that. I absolutely love that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angie. Uh, I love it. It's so beautiful. Yay. Gidi, anything you want to wrap up with? Um, if, if people are listening now and they want to get in contact with you, what do they do, Priscilla? Well, I really use Facebook as my business card. It's like an, a, a business card that's always alive. 
So I pop stuff in there all the time. And, you know, you can follow me, you can keep up to date. And I think that's the best platform. So if you jump onto Facebook and um, pop my name in there, Priscilla and Nico Tricarico, then we can connect. Cool. Wonderful. So, yeah, I'm just going to repeat it uh, if people didn't get it. So it's Priscilla and Nico Tricarico. And I'm just going to spell it. Priscilla and Iniko, that's E-N-I-K-O, and Tricarico is T-R-I-C-A-R-I-C-O. Priscilla and Iniko Tricarico on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. It's been so fascinating. I really enjoy listening to you, Priscilla, because it's it's obvious you have such a a wealth of knowledge so it's 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 been fascinating and i'm sure a lot of our listeners um have been inspired so thank you for coming on thank you so much i really appreciate this it's been wonderful oh you're welcome okay and I look let's wrap it up connecting through on facebook yeah that's so lovely thank you yeah it's great i'm getting and I'm awesome, Angie Ingstrom. And um, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us on Momentum Maker Podcast. And thank you again, Priscilla, for joining us today and sharing your brilliant message. Um, so all of you listeners out there, just keep your momentum, keep moving forward. And if you want to learn more about Yidi and myself on Elite with what we do with Elite Virtual Stages um, and how we help businesses scale, you can find us on Facebook and on the web at elitevirtualstages.com forward slash reports. You can grab a free report there and learn all about that side of things. Um, but that's a wrap for today. So thanks again, Priscilla. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>